Hello and welcome to Screen to Screen is the new hybrid face-to-face -face, sponsored by Dell Expert Network and Intel. My name is Ed Hannon and I'm joined today by Eric Townsend, Director of SMB Partner and MSP Marketing with Intel. And let's just get started right away with the first uh, segment, which we're calling Collaborate with Confidence Post-Pandemic. And Eric, how did the pandemic accelerate the shift to a hybrid remote workforce? And it's interesting, right? If, if we think back uh, before, gosh, what, 2000, people were actually working in an office. And, and then they moved this shift, I got to go work uh, remotely. And it was actually, it was like the, they used the 80-20 rule. It's about 20% of people, um, and there's a couple of companies that did research, said that we're actually working remote, 80% were not. And I think what inhibited that, um, that I think now when you have about the acceleration is that now that people have taken time to think about what's what's the process for people to work in a remote environment? What is that? They've also taken time to say, what should be the policies be around that? And then um, Dell and Intel come along and say, hey, let's get you the technology to enable that. So those are things of process, policies, and technology has really helped it kind of move along. Is this shift to hybrid remote work, is this an emerging trend or is this something that was really kind of already moving that way before the pandemic even hit us? Yeah, and you know, I think when you think, when you're looking at kind of this, this hybrid remote work, I, we, I mentioned about the 20% that were there before. I, I think there was the idea of about the hybrid work was, was there, it was, it was a need for it. Um, but technically it wasn't utilized. Meaning, and when I mean a need, that's more for people's well-being and not being able to try, you know, sit in traffic and all stuff. So there was a need saying, hey, we should be looking at how people can work remote. Everyone, you know, but it was like, well, but, you know, we don't have the right, wow, what's, what happens if this happens? What happens if this, do we have this sports this? How do we do like this whole virtual conversation now? that wasn't really there? And so I think with the, even people now saying, you know, it was, it was there, the need was there. I think at some companies and some verticals, it was a lot more, you know, hey, they're there. Um, but in other places, it wasn't much just because there was a lot of gating factors. But I think now, because we've got the, the right process, policies and technology in place, it's going to move much faster. Yeah, what's funny to me is, um, is if you go back a little bit, not, not forever, but if you go back a little bit, the, whole, the sort of the dot com and the VC stuff that was going on, everybody was wearing jeans to the workplace and they got pool tables in the break room. And, you know, it's like casual Fridays and you want to work from home in the summer, you go ahead and work from home in the summer. What happened was all those people got acquired <laughs> bigger companies and got sort of um, absorbed into the larger companies and that sort of washed away. Now, because of the pandemic, fortunately, the technology is there to support what the pandemic sort of forced. And to your point, I think, you know, the rubber has met the road here. The technology is there. The need is there. And everybody's sort of waking back up to that realization of there's nothing wrong with it. You know, the technology, especially now, is obviously stronger than it's ever been, but it really allows companies and workers to have flexibility that they only dreamed of having before. So I wanna segue then into the next question, which is now that the pandemic is kind of behind us, I mean, it, depending on where you are when, when, you're, when you're watching this, what do you think is gonna happen with the new hybrid workforce? I think it, Ed, their expectation is gonna go higher, right? So I think when like, when we first started whole work from home, people were in their hoodies, they were kind of like, there's no virtual, I was like, now there's virtual backgrounds also, but I think their expectation, when I think it's gonna be interesting because they're going to expect more support. So they're going to kind of get that FOMO. Of, hey, I'm not in the, I'm not with everyone else, but I'm, I'm going to need more support because I'm, I'm me, right? I think also they're going to say, I, I actually, I'm going to expect some more innovations. Like we've made some pretty big jumps over the last 15 months, but what type of technology is actually out there to make my integration people that are in the office even better? And I think also when you think about the expectations that expectation for more flexibility. I know it sounds kind of weird. They're like, okay, you're already working remotely, but they, they want to be able to say, wherever I'm at, I don't care wherever I'm going. I want to be able to be, to be able to be supported, have the innovation, but then have that flexibility to work. So if it's nine o'clock at night, I need to have that support person there. If, if it's, if it's two o'clock in the morning, I got to make sure my device is going to work no matter what. So I think the expectation game is going to move up. Yeah, I think it, it, along with all that too, it's also, it's also humanized people a little bit. The idea of like, you know, you can be in your house, I can be in my house, you know, we, we can be wherever we need to be. 
And while it has expanded the expectation level, it's also humanized things a little bit so that the flexibility that we need from technology is also sort of enabled now in the technology, you know, in the, in the people. In other words, the people and the technology are both allowing the flexibility. People are more understanding of each other's situations and the technology, to your point, sort of supports that. So I want to move now to the next segment, which is why screen to screen is the new hybrid face to face. And my first question is that everyone expects this hybrid workforce will grow very quickly. How will this hybrid workforce thrive in the existing business collaboration framework? And, and it, when you when you think about how we do business, right, it's it's obviously changed a ton of the last few months. I think that the true in office uh, kind of environment, we we kind of feel it where we're at right now. We're actually in an office where people have another experience. They're in an office. Is it a a four four story building? Is there's cubes around it? Is there conference rooms? No, but but we are in that environment today. And when I think where we've been and where we're at right now, so virtual backgrounds, right? It looks like people are sitting in an office, right? Like if, think about when people do this thing called traveling, they've traveled for work, they would be at like, you know, some type of club, an airline club, right? And they'd be in and they would be talking to people there. That, that's, that's just now extended beyond. I think also the collaboration applications that we have now and what they can do way more, way, way more. I mean, think about if you're sharing a file on Teams or if you're, if you're chatting on something, that idea of how do I actually interact with people, now it's not just verbal, but I can put things up on the screen. I could put them in there. That's kind of gone to another level. And, and I think all that is encompassed by this whole, the collaboration mindset is no longer, we have to be in the same room. We got to be, we got to see each other like this, but we don't have to technically be in the same room. And I think that's the part where, and, and, and this is beyond just in, inside of a company. This is with their customers, their suppliers. And I, and I think that even if you look across generations, right? So if you think of like the millennials, the centennials, all the other, they're kind of expecting this. I had a manager one time I was working with and he was like, yeah, you know, um, my millennials and centennials, they'll actually stay at their cube and they won't go to the conference room down the way. Because like, why do I got to walk to go to, I can just sit on my computer, I can be right here. Like, why do I have to go down? I have to sit in a room with everyone. That's kind of weird. So I think this, this jump that's going to be happening is that now this whole thing around what this true office environment is, is going to be kind of disconnected offices all over. Yeah, it's funny. Um, when you talk about like collaboration tools and business collaborations, how it's sort of morphed over time. And I go back to like, I mean, if you want to go really far back, you could say like AOL Instant Messenger, but that's probably more of a personal application. But you'd say like Gchat or, you know, you know, things like that, like Google Chat. And then it's sort of morphed into, you know, um, Teams. And, you know, teams is kind of more next gen. It's more things like Slack and, and, yeah. and things like that, where they were like chat functions with like, so it was like the collaboration was really chatting with each other. It wasn't really sharing information. It was more communicating with each other. And now, like you said, you know, with things like, you know, Teams and Zoom and things like that, you can do, you know, and all these different tools, some of which we're going to talk about today, you can not only screen share, you can upload files, you can make changes in real time. So you're, you're, do, you're actually working together from wherever you are. So to your point, you know, looking forward a little bit, my next question would be, how do you see hybrid employees collaborating seamlessly with the folks who do migrate sort of back to the office? So the good thing is, and we couldn't say this a while ago, but, but collaboration platforms are real now, right? They're not, like you say, it's not just a, a chatting function I've got on Skype where I'm going to just chat somewhere. There's actually a real deal where I have the same capability if I'm sitting in the office at my home or a share office or behind the firewall of the corporate environment. I have the same tools. So I think that platform level of, okay, these platforms are going to enable us to actually work better together. I think the tool side of it's interesting part, because when we think about collaboration, there's the communication part of it. There's actually the development part of it. And I think there's the execution part of it. And I think when we, when we, like I said, the maturity over the last 12 months has been amazing. And I think it's actually changed people's mindset of like, you know, what we thought was good, not good. What we really need is this. And I think what's going to be happening is all of a sudden we're going to have people saying, hey, this is what we thought was great. This is great. So I think that that part, and, and once again, I go back to um, that mindset that people are thinking about, what do we have to do really to, to collaborate better? Because there is going to be, I, I, I was talking to coming about this yesterday. It's when, we're, when we have people in an office, they may go back the tendency of it's just us in the room. And we have to be really mindful on, okay, but the process, Paul's procedure we have is that, there will be people join our own. That's just how it is. So how do we make sure we connect better with each other? And whether that's doing inclusion activities up front, 
what is making sure that we actually have the main agenda points for people online. But the environment, I mean, I don't know if you I remember the Cisco telepresence stuff, right? And I was like, you gotta, you know, give your right arm and leg and maybe a liver and you get one of those, right? There's one, there's one of them. And we had one at Intel that was like off four buildings away. And that was like the true collaboration experience. And I look at it and I'm like, it's not even half of what we're doing right now. I mean, it's like, so I think that's gonna be something that we're gonna actually see is that that not only the platforms are better, not only that the tools are gonna to enable that, but then also the mindset of, okay, when we're here together, we're here together, you know? Yeah, and it's funny how technology works because that Cisco telepresence stuff doesn't seem like, like it feels like forever ago and it wasn't that long ago in like, you know, in like the, in like, re, if we go outside of our little tech universe here and you go out into like the real world, that's not that far, that's not that far back when we were dealing with that stuff. Now it seems like some sort of a Star Trek convention where it's like, you know, this like teleportation device and things like that. But and anyway, uh, to, but we're, while we're talking specific technologies, uh, my next question would be to talk about some of the stuff that you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, which is how are Dell Latitude laptops that are powered by Ele Intel 11th gen uh, vPro processors enabling this new type of collaboration? The, the big kind of, the big idea is how are we improving um, overall experiences within the work environment, right? So that what, what we did before for chatting, which was thought was awesome, how do we make sure that video experience is that much better? How do we make sure that if, if I'm sharing something, I can actually read what it actually is? Because back in the day, you would share something you're like, okay, I can't really see it. Can you, can you MOOC? I, I can't. So between uh, virtual video experiences that we're doing from a graphics perspective, um, noise canceling, I know it sounds kind of weird. You're like, it's just on the headsets. But when people are working in a remote environment, there can be um, distractions, whether it's fur babies are running around making noise, whether it's normal babies are running around. But, but how do we make sure that's just there automatically? And then also, I would say just the, the background people are at. I mean, you see at the background, people are like, it looks like they're sitting in an office. So that capability where, you know, they can be virtually somewhere or, or not, that, that's going to basically, I think, change the, the perception, that mindset of, okay, this person is not just in their kitchen. They're, they're here with me. They're being present. We have some work to do. Excellent. Now let's move to the next section, uh, segment, which is how Dell and Intel provide seamless next level capabilities. And the first question would be, what are the new capabilities of the 11th gen uh, Intel Core V Pro platform? Yeah, so I'll give you the, when you think about the new latitudes, Ed, right? So when, when we said, if Intel and Dell came here and say, hey, what can we do to really kind of let, raise the game up? So improving that experience. So we said the video aspect of it, we said, let's just, we have a Iris graphics from Intel, how do we raise the game there? Um, the, the noise canceling stuff, now that's actually built in. Um, so we've got this GNA 2.0, it's a techie thing for, it actually is, is built in when you're using Teams or using Zoom. And then also that blurring, having the background, there's some, some things with graphics, things with our CPU that makes it so it's good. That's, that's the experience side. I do want to mention that there's also at a huge thing coming. It's a little of our experience this, but around connectivity. So everyone's about uh, 5G, most of them about 5G, but there's also this thing called Wi-Fi 6E. So we've had Wi-Fi 6E is now the extended version. There's more security on it. Um, that's something now that's now in those latitude level 10 V Pro. And then also when we're, we're sharing things on screens, I know it sounds kind of, but like sometimes when you really think about um, like kind of think of, of like CAD drawings or you think about medical things, you really need to make sure that stuff's coming up really, really good. And I think um, we actually have with Dell these kind of different codecs we're putting in place so that when people do share something on a screen that is detailed, it'll be, you can easily see it, right? It's not like you have to have an 80 inch monitor. You can look at it and go, okay, I can see this and it provides that clarity. So think of improved experience, improved connectivity, and then how do we make sure that, that, that this video interaction is at its highest level possible? Excellent, and then the next question would be, how do these capabilities help this new hybrid workforce? And, and this is, I think, what we're all gonna struggle with, right? But I think it's, I think this technology, because of the connectivity of the channel stuff, is that it's gonna enable us to be in the room without being in the room. So we're gonna, we're gonna literally, uh, we won't know if the room is warm or cold, Right? But we'll know what people are thinking in the room. We'll be able to see what's going on. We'll be able to, to basically collaborate what's happening. And we'll be able to get the business results that we want to get within that team. Excellent. And then uh, the last question would be, how, how are Dell Latitude laptops powered by the Intel 11th Gen V Pro processors yeah. staying ahead of the competition? And, and, and this is where I think people, um, over the last year, we've had, I won't call it FOMO, but People are like not getting their system. I need to buy a system. I can't find it, right? So I'm going to just go buy what I'm going to go buy this system. When you think about the Dell Latitude systems, it's, I mean, I just mentioned all this stuff about experience, connectivity, all the video stuff. 
but there's still some baseline table stakes stuff that has to happen. If I'm a business user, security. I got to make sure that someone's secure. I got to make sure that mention that expectation rising where, hey, I don't care if it's three o'clock in the morning. If I got a problem, you got to be able to get to my system, manage it. So the manageability aspect. And then there's got to be um, aspects built in that you're going to make me more productive. So this these aspects of expectations rising, security, manageability, productivity, that has not gone away. And for other systems that are out there, people are like, hey, it's a great system. It may look a certain, it looks cool. Well, does it have security built in? Oh, I don't know about that. What type of security are you talking about? Dell Intel, we've got like multiple layers, not, not just multi-factor authentication, but all these other um, encryption technologies that built in can be managed. Managed. Well, we could have a person send it back and then we can send them a new one. Is that like a man? No, no but like getting to them. And then productive, how do we make sure that all the software's out there all work seamlessly? And that's when someone gets a Dell system, there's not a lot of conversation of, hey, this doesn't work or doesn't integrate. It's all kind of put together. Excellent. So let's move to our final segment, which is what resources are available to help channel partners uh, grow their hybrid workforce business. And let's just start by talking about resources. What does uh, in, what do Intel and Dell have to help partners grow and support their hybrid workforce customer base? And this is Ed, something for a while partners been asking for. And I, I get super excited we're talking because so, you know, and Intel with Intel Partner Alliance, but at Dell, this Dell Expert Network, I want people to hear Dell Expert Network. So part of it is, is that there are trainings and solutions um, that you may not have known about before. So that knowledge base that's there is a big deal. I'd also say, I call them solution specialists, um, but you're gonna now have people that you'll be able to interact with and Dan that goes, gosh, you know, let me understand what you're trying to look for. And they have access to all these different solutions. So you've got knowledge you can get access to, solution specialists get access to. And that last part that everyone talks about rewards. Okay, so what's the incentives, what do I have? And, and it's interesting because it's not just about maybe only product you have, but there's incentives for trainings, and other things. So I think the, the knowledge, solution specialists and awards are things that partners are going to kind of go, oh, I didn't know this was here. It's really impressive when we talk about, you know, we talk about partners as, as, you know, partnering with the vendor, but the partnership between Dell Expert Network and Intel is, is just amazing when you think of two top of mind, you know, industry giants who are working together uh, to develop, you know, solutions and technologies that really everyone benefits from. So, you know, kudos to both the folks at Dell Expert Network and Intel for, you know, coming together to, you know, to do, to make all this happen. But the next question I have for you is, what benefits does the Dell Expert Network provide MSPs today that has not been offered before in the channel? So this is where I, I call them the game changers, right? So these are game changers where like a lot of times partners, whenever they're going and um, buying products across, we're like, right, okay, man, I got to figure out where this is at, or I've got, and I got to log a ticket on something and, or I got a small phone. There are awesome MSP tools that Dell, Dell Expert Network has, right? So if I think of like live optics, um, if I think of the tools that basically are going to help change um, a partner's business to make them more efficient, that's a big one. Um, I go back to these SMB advisors. A lot of partners I deal with are not selling to the Fortune 500 companies. There's some opportunity. Most of them are my small business, mean business. And, and, and how can I like, what, what trends should I be knowing about? What things should I get access to? And, and the Dell Expert Network, partners actually can get access to like CompTIA and stuff that CompTIA is doing to kind of educate around small medium business. And the last part I'd say is that when you're in the Dell Expert Network, um, it's, you're not like pigeonholed, like you get to see end to end technology. So if you're like, hey, I want to, I need to get some from my customer that's around a PC, business PC, I need to get something around a business server. I'm even looking at IoT stuff. This is kind of the one stop shop where you can say to your small business advisor, hey, um, tell me, I'm looking at this, this, this. Is there something available? I mean, Dell obviously is massive with product, but now it's actually become smaller because you're able to actually sit with talk with someone and say, can you help me with this? I've talked to mobile partners and I can honestly say that those folks are available all the time. There was actually a, a partner recently I was talking with them. They were, their rep was on vacation and they were still helping them. Like they were like, hey, by the way, they brought their laptop and hey, let me help you with this. As we get back and there's, there's kind of business starts ramping. It's like, okay, who's going to actually help? Who, how can I become more efficient? That's what you're going to get with all the different uh, DEN benefits that are out there for partners. As we leave today's program, what are the next steps that partners should do to take advantage of all the resources that you've spoken about today? Yeah, so first thing is I, I, I'd go um, to dell.com and I'd actually look up Dell Expert Network, get signed up there. That's the first thing is, invariably you're gonna actually see it and start seeing all the benefits and resources. So I'd say that's number one. Uh, number two, I'd look and see, okay, what are the different um, solutions out there I should be talking to my customer about? Um, 
because Dell's got so many different ones to consider. Um, I'd say, you know, Intel, we've got our partner program, our Intel Partner Alliance. But the key thing is, is to really kind of have a strategy moving forward of how can I use my vendors? Right? That's the part. And I think like the Dell Experiment one has so many different ones. I mean, I, I probably only brushed on a couple of them, but be able to have that dedicated rep, being able to actually have tools to make you more efficient, being able to have those incentives available. And there's more than that, just, you know, those three most partners talk say that I, if there's a program that's got those three, where, sign me up. Eric, you're the best. Thank you as always. Thanks to everyone for watching. Unfortunately, we're out of time for today. Eric and I could talk for hours about this stuff. We usually do. We just don't always have the cameras on. But um, you have been watching uh, Screen to Screen is the new hybrid face-to-face -face, sponsored by the Dell Expert Network and Intel. My name is Ed Hannon. For Eric Townsend, we'd like to both thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.